it's all but confirmed that Spelljammer is coming to 5th edition or, you know, 5.5 or whatever they're doing, you know, next. Today's random encounter, we're going to be talking about Spelljammer. Hot dog. Hot dog. <laughs> so there have been uh, there have been some little Easter eggs and some little hints towards Spelljammer beyond just the unearthed Arcana stuff that we were talking about. That's not um, even Easter egg territory. I feel yeah, that's like, like full blown. I feel like they're hitting us in the head yeah. with it. <laughs> but for years now, they've been they've been sort of teasing it mm-hmm. back. Um, I think it was maybe 2018. Not sure exactly the date, but uh, the the Dungeon of the Mad Mage book, yeah, the hardcover uh, uh, story book for Fifth Edition. Um, in the Undermount, Undermountain, there was a layer that had a inn that had a Spelljammer helm on top of it, and it, cool. it it was a sort of it didn't necessarily say Spelljammer on it, but the players could interact with it, they could do stuff with it, and. Uh, uh, at the time, we were kind of like, "Is this supposed to be a spell jammer?" We were like, nobody was sure. Yeah. And uh, then in Tasha's, they have the uh, the Mind Flayers uh, Nautiloids um, ship. Yes. In the in like actual artwork, um, and in in Baldur's Gate three, the video game, the uh, Mind Flayers come into Baldur's Gate on their spell jammer ship. Okay. I think it's it's all but confirmed that spell jammer is coming. To fifth edition, or you know, five point five, or whatever they're doing, you know, next. They've at least confirmed that it's you know it is a part of the D and D world um, currently. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't like so you know you could you could hack it and just take the second edition stuff and and do your own thing and and uh, but it's also I mean when I saw in Tasha's Cauldron I saw the painting uh, the artwork with the with the mind flare nautiloids. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah, yeah, it was. It's front and center. Like they're they're there. It's the Spelljammer ship. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so that's cool. And 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 for those of you that are uh, aren't familiar with mm. uh, with Spelljammer, can kind of talk a little bit about uh, the way that um, space works in Dungeons and Dragons, um, because it's not the way space works in the real world. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> so when Spelljammer came out, uh, it came out for second edition, uh, and it was called AD&D Adventures in Space. That was like the tagline. Uh, and the basic idea behind uh, Spelljammer was that what we consider space uh, is is called wild space. Yeah. And all of wild space for a particular world is contained within a crystal sphere. Sure. And the crystal sphere, you can't you can't leave it. You can't penetrate it. It's a physical It's object. a physical, yeah, it's yeah. physically holding in the wild space of that particular universe, mm-hmm. that particular world. Um, so like the world of Toril, which is uh, Forgotten Realms, the world of Kryn, which is the dra- uh, Dragonlance, mm. and the world of uh, Oerth, which is Greyhawk, they were all contained in different crystal spheres, three different crystal physically spheres. Physically separate from each other. Physically separate, yeah. yep. Uh, those crystal spheres had natural, uh, naturally occurring portals that okay. would appear. And uh, spellcasters could also create portals with, with specific spells in order to leave the crystal spheres. Uh, and once you leave the crystal spheres, then you're in this sort of like rainbow miasma, <laughs> right? That's called uh, phlogiston. Sure. Okay. And the thing about phlogiston is it's... it it keeps all the crystal spheres like they're floating in the phlogiston and it kind of keeps them from bumping into each other Mm -hmm. right but it's also super flammable so (laughs) if you if you bring a light source if you leave a crystal sphere through a portal and enter into the phlogiston and you have a a flammable light source or cast a spell with flame yeah uh it's like casting a fireball on yourself sure like you you blow up Uh, so (laughs) Uh, Spelljammer uh, ships when they leave a crystal sphere and they're and they're they're traveling through the phlogiston, they turn off all their lights, mm. and the the phlogiston has like a, a naturally occurring like light source. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not super dark like space. Right, yeah. right. Um, so the thing about the you know the thing about uh, Spelljammer ships is they all 
have their own air bubble, mm-hmm. right? So that's another another way in which the physics of Dungeons and Dragons space is different, right? And their own gravity, right? And their own gravity, yeah. right? So if you leave uh, if you leave a planet in a in a ship, your ship is going to be in, surrounded in this bubble of air, mm. okay? And if you were to leave a planet or to leave a ship, you would also be surrounded in a bubble of air, just a lot smaller yeah. bubble than what, what a spelljammer ship would have. Relative to uh, your own gravity. Relative to your own yeah, your own mass, your own gravity. Um, so spelljammer ships have a gravity, uh, and it's 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 centered uh, like running through the ship. Mm-hmm. Um, it's basically kind of like almost like I don't want to say common sense, but like the way that you think you should be standing is the way you can be standing. But you yeah. also can stand uh, upside down on underneath oh, the really? ship too, yeah. <laughs> okay. um, but and when two ships come into c- uh, contact with each other, they're like gravity can kind of get messed up. Sure. Um, so it's important that to like only have one side of your ship have <laughs> people on it. Sure. Regularly, like you don't you don't have a ship that has a bottom and a top. Sure. Because when it runs into another ship, like everybody would somebody fall. would fall into the right. One, one half of the ship would like fall off or something like that. Um, but so you got your own gravity uh, and you got your own air, but the air is not unlimited, right? Yeah, like, yeah. It'll go bad, it's right? It'll go bad. And so um, your air can go from fresh air to foul air to then deadly air. Mm. And those are all different uh, different categories of air in the second edition rules that have different, uh, you know, con- you have to do different constitution checks and things like that. Oh. If you're in deadly air and you fail a constitution check, you're just going to die. You're dead, yeah. right? It's it's, it's poisonous. Yeah. Um, and so uh, that's something that's really cool is you have this like clock running on mm. on your air at all times, even when you're on the ship. It's not. You uh, got to get to another sphere. You got to get to another. You got to get to another crystal sphere, and then you got to not only get into another crystal sphere, but drop down into a planet's atmosphere to sort of replenish sure, your yeah. your air supply. Um, you know, and it obviously has to be a planet that has uh, breathable air. Mm-hmm. Um, you had mentioned before too about helms, right? Um, so helms are basically like thrones, yes, yep. right? And they are powered by magic. So both. Uh, mages and priests, using, using the second edition lingo, um, can power uh, sh- the, the helms of ships. Okay, and they sit in you know they sit in them, and effectively it drains them of their spells for okay. the day, and that allows them to. But go, they can pilot it. But they can pilot it, and it sets the speed depending on what level character you are. The the faster you can go. Okay. Uh, there's major helms and minor helms, so uh, which. Basically, like, you know, you've got a, a one and two per caster level for a major helm. So if you're like, you know, uh, you know, if you're a 10th level character, you're going at a, at a rate of 20, I believe. But if you're in a minor helm, it's a one in three. Um, so you want a major helm. Yeah. So you want a major helm so that you're going. It's more expensive. So you're going faster. Yeah. Yep. Major helm's going faster. It's going gonna, it's gonna to mean that your caster levels are going to be utilized in a 1 in 2 percentage rather than a 1 in 3 in a minor, minor I think helm. it's also cool that the Spelljammer ships are nothing like a spaceship. Right. They're, they're essentially like ships that you would use on the ocean in the 1700s. You know. The Galleon. The Galleon, yeah, yep. yeah. They look like traditional sort of D&D era ships, but... They can fly in space. Yeah. Well, and then depending on the different races that are uh, traveling in space, they got super creative and, mm. and really have very specific looking ships uh, for their particular people. So like beholders have very, very specific looking ships that kind of are reminiscent of their of their race. And the same thing with mind, mind yeah, flares and flare. nautiloids have have those sort of like uh, those talent, you know, the they look like the nautilus. tentacles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so that so that's cool. The dwarves, there's their um, their spell jamming ships tend to look almost like castles, like, oh, okay. like towers okay. and stuff. Uh, lots of just lots of different uh, incredible variety. But yeah, the human, uh, you know, the like human ships or whatever they look like sea sea vessels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's uh, what they like had available. Galleons. To get this. Yeah, yeah. You, just, <laughs> you slap a you slap a helm on it, one of these thrones, and you have a spellcaster, and off you go. Um, so it utilizes the, the spellcaster, the priest uh, or, or mage is basically like a battery. Sure, yeah, yeah. For the for the ship, um, and so you know, eventually they get drained of their 
drained of their spells, and then they have to have a, a night's sleep in order to replenish their spells mm-hmm. and be able to to then power the, the helm again. So, so what can you do with Spelljammer? Do you mean in terms of like adventures and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah. This is clearly not like a a epic campaign type mm-hmm. thing, but it's clearly you know useful. Yeah. So it can be a, I mean, obviously it can be a way to get from here to there, okay. right? And to have uh, multiverse style adventures. Um, I also think too, it is basically uh, just another way of having sort of some seafaring uh, style adventures, but just in a in a in a more fantastical sure. uh, setting. So like you know, having a pirate boarding party attack your ship. That kind of stuff in space is is a is a is a trope Makes of travel more fun. Yep, more interesting and in, encountering strange new worlds and mm. and new new races. You know, with strange ships that you don't recognize. Um, uh, you know that so it, it it lends itself to you know to nautical stuff to anything sort of new and novel. If you want to introduce a new race, they could just have their own ship and you encounter them. Sure, and then the mul- the multiverse just sort of opening up. In the original uh, second edition Spelljammer, you only had Toral, Kryn, and Oerth, the yeah. three the three core worlds. Um, and even though like Dark Sun existed, um, the the rules the rules stated that like you couldn't get to Dark Sun. <laughs> uh, now, part of the reason for that was because I think they were worried about breaking the world because of how valuable metal is, okay, and stuff like that, and how important it is to not have certain elements. Uh, you know that, that you don't want to taint it. You don't, yeah, and, and it would be too easy for like somebody to just load up a ship with lots of metal and <laughs> land on, on, no, super on rich. Athos, and then yeah, you're super rich, and or you just you broke the world, right? So <laughs> at the time, I think because Athos was brand new, they were like, yeah, you can't get there. Sure. I'm hoping if they're gonna reintroduce Dark Sun, if they're gonna, you know, expand to Eberron, mm. if they're gonna include the world of a uh, critical role, Alexandria. Yeah. It, yep. Uh, you know that. You can get to all of them, like that's that, and that's yeah. the way I would want to run it, and that's the way I would want to play it. Um, that 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 should be an option that you really do want to have a multiverse, and everybody has a multiverse these days, right? So, so <laughs> yeah, D and D, go for it. Like, have a multiverse. Like, let's uh, it, you know. So, I want to be able to go from Dragonlance to Athos. Don't tell me I can't. <laughs> yeah, like they've, and definitely in the the more recent books, they've been more on the the page of, hey. This is what we say happens, right? But use your discretion as a DM, kind of do whatever you want. Yeah. So I, I think, hopefully, they'll they'll continue with that, and let you go kind of wherever. Yeah. And have it like canon that you can go wherever you want. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I'd like to uh, maybe have a mini adventure to go down into the under under mountain to grab that helm, that spelljammer helm, uh, and make use out of it to. To bring it to a different world, I think that'd be fun. Yeah, I, I wonder too how um, how frequently people see spell jamming vessels in the sky above mm. on the different worlds. So that was another thing that that jumped out at me. They said, you know, like nobody on Athos on the Dark Sun world would ever have seen a spell jamming vessel, sure. right? Uh, so that made me think. Well, so people in the Forgotten Realms see them all the time. <laughs> Like airplanes, or yeah, like do, airplanes, or or it, they've just they've seen one and it's it's super uncommon, but it's not, it's not something that they've never seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so I, but I couldn't gauge that. They said like Athos, nobody would have seen one, but um, mm. you know that led me to think like, oh, so they're really common, or how common would it be to see one on O Earth or to see one on sure. on uh, on Kryn? Mm, that's um, interesting. I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe there'll be like a sort of general spell jammer uh, DM's guide. Yeah, where it has all information you may need to know. I would still think it would be pretty rare, but that's oh, mu- yeah, probably. You know. I mean, if we're talking like different worlds, Exandria has uh, a couple of the cities and a couple of the continents have uh, like essentially blimps. Mm-hmm. Um, so they have flying machines that fly via like a magical um, like particle. Or uh, mineral, um, so a it's spell jammer. Hide. Yeah, a spell jammer ship wouldn't be maybe necessarily noticeable when 
everybody's used to seeing all that kind of thing. Okay. But like, you know, in Waterdeep, who knows how many people have ever seen one or right. if they have, maybe they thought it was a fluke or, you know. Well, and I think if, so if they could hide on uh, Exandria, they would, could hide in Eberron too. Yeah, yeah, Eberron's got like, that kind of stuff got too. Got that kind of steampunk vibe yeah, yeah. And with with trains and airships and mm-hmm. stuff like that too. So I think it would make sense that those those are going to incorporate. But it, yeah, I, I want... That's interesting. I, how frequently do you see them? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's a, it's a, would you shoot it down right away? <laughs> <laughs> well, like the, um, the, the, the Mind Flayer ship in the trailer, at least, for, for Baldur's Gate 3... Um, like sort of warp drives into Baldur's Gate mm-hmm. and it's the Nautilus yep. and it's everybody screaming like what the heck is that thing yeah oh my god it's attacking and then the mind flayers come in and attack everybody and awesome uh, it's 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 pretty brutal <laughs> that's, good. that's good thanks for watching that clip don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel to see more tabletop RPG discussions here on YouTube Check out everyeditionrpg.com to find links to all our socials, as well as links to the podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Thanks for watching. And remember, it's not the edition you play. It's how you roll the dice.